स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया next i am going to also introduce a very important concept known as the uh, the concept of conjugate points it turns out that the moment the solution to this jacobi accessory equation uh, contains conjugate points we will neither get uh, a minima or a maxima so the extrema that we get will neither be a minima or a maxima if we are to find some conjugate points and later on we will see that the non existence of these conjugate points will give us the necessary as well as the sufficient condition for the existence of minima right and the same result holds for maxima with the integrand taken with a minus sign okay so let us see what are these conjugate points so let us say so conjugate points are the solution to the jacob are the roots of the solution to the jacobi accessory equation such that uh, they are the roots of the same solution to the jacobi accessory equation such that these points are not equal to each other uh, but uh, yeah so they, these points are not equal to each other so what i said is the following let let x not be a real valued point and let kappa in r minus x not right is another point right so if if there exists a non trivial if there exists a non trivial solution there exists a non trivial solution to my equation 7 satisfying satisfying u of x0 is equal to u of x1 is equal to 0 then i see that kappa is a point which is conjugate to x not point conjugate to x not so that is the definition first of all this new point kappa should not be identically equal to x not and they must both be the roots of the same solution to the jacobi accessory equation okay so so what is so special about these conjugate points i am going to highlight the importance of this conjugate points step by step starting from some small results let's say in the form of a lemma so so my first lemma let me term it as lemma 5 we have described up to lemma 4 so let uh, so so i have a lemma 4 right uh, let me go back yeah so i have discussed already lemma 4 so suppose i have my f which satisfies the condition of lemma 4 what is the condition of lemma 4 that f is smooth and satisfies the strengthened legendre conditions so let let f satisfy satisfy conditions of my previous lemma lemma 4 which is mainly that uh, f is smooth it's continuously differentiable and and the strengthened legendre condition holds the strengthened legendre uh, legendre condition holds right so if these conditions are true and suppose and suppose there are there are no conjugate points we do not find conjugate points the points to x not in this half open interval x not to x1 we do not find a point conjugate to x not then there is a non trivial solution to the jacobi accessory equation right so i am going to i am stating this lemma without proof so then then there exists a non trivial there exists a non trivial solution there exists a non trivial solution u to 7 uh, such that such that u is not zero for all x in 
x naught to x 1 right. So, if we do not find conjugate points, it is guaranteed that there is a non trivial solution to the Jacobi accessory equation. Okay. So, then uh, so I can summarize my, my results in lemma 5 and lemma 4. So, again recall lemma 4 is that suppose Legendre condition holds then the secondary variation is positive definite right and then suppose in lemma 5 says that suppose Legendre condition holds then the, there is a non trivial solution to the Jacobi accessory equation or in other words uh, we can find the link between the non trivial solution to the Jacobi accessory equation and the second variation being positive definite which is going to give the sufficient condition between the occurrence of conjugate points uh, leading to the positive definite uh, ness of the second variation. Uh, so, so let me uh, let me state the result. So, what I said is uh, lemma 4 lemma 4 previously discussed and lemma 5 lemma 5 uh, can be combined can be combined to look to give me the following result. I am going to combine write this combined result in the form of a theorem theorem 25 which says that let f let f be a smooth let f be a smooth function of its arguments x y y prime and let y be an be an extremal let y be a smooth extremal let y be a smooth extremal for the functional let y be a smooth extremal for the functional j such that f of y prime y prime is greater than 0 uh, such that the strengthened Legendre condition is positive for all x in x naught to x 1. Then if there are no conjugate points to x naught, then I am guaranteed that the second variation of the functional is positive definite. So, if uh, there are no points in the half open interval x naught to x 1 uh, conjugate conjugate to point x naught then then I am guaranteed that the sufficient condition the sufficient condition well then well the, I am guaranteed that the second variation is positive definite the second variation that is my del square j is positive definite right. So, this is just a combined uh, the combined result of the two lemmas we have just discussed. Okay. So, as I said this result provides us with the uh, sufficient condition or the link between the non existence of conjugate points and the positive definiteness of the second variation. However, we still have to find the necessary condition uh, that is the other way round linking the positive definiteness to the non existence of the conjugate points and also further we have to find the link between or the if and only if condition between the second variation being positive definite and y the extremal being minimum right. So, as I just said this theorem is uh, is the sufficient condition provides us with the sufficient condition or uh, or if or it is the link link between the absence of the conjugate points absence of the conjugate points conjugate points uh, and and positive definiteness of the functional definite uh, definiteness of j right so so that is what it is okay so, so then, uh, so so let me let me highlight the, this result with a with a small example. So the example that I have is as follows. So let my functional j of y be integral from x naught to x one y prime square dx 
So, my Jacobi accessory equation in this case will be recall that my accessory equation is as follows. So, it is del del x of f y prime y prime u prime minus b times b times u is equal to 0 and I see that where where so in this case my b will be 0 students can check this and my f y prime y prime will be 2 right. So, from here I see that the equation reduces to the following or or the solution u of x is alpha plus beta x or a straight line right and from here I can see that only the trivial solution will satisfy uh, uh, will satisfy uh, the existence the non trivial existence of conjugate points ok. So, from here I can see that only only trivial only trivial solution uh, only trivial solution can satisfy can satisfy uh, conjugate conjugate point condition only trivial solution can satisfy conjugate point condition given by u of x naught is equal to u of u of kappa is equal to 0 uh, for kappa not equal to x naught right. So, this is only possible that when u is identically equal to 0, but uh, by our theorem uh, we cannot accept a trivial solution right or in other words we are we can also see that this particular second derivative is positive. So, in this functional the strengthened Legendre condition is also satisfied the integrand of the functional is smooth function of y prime and also the Jacobi accessory equation tells us that there are no conjugate points. The, the conclusion is that the second variation is positive definite. So, so no conjugate points, no conjugate points to x naught in the open interval x naught to x 1 implies that the second variation is positive ok. Ok. So, so that is how we are going to use our result described by theorem number 25. So, as I just said that the result that we have described in that previous theorem is all about the sufficient condition linking the non existence of conjugate points to the second variation being positive definiteness. How about the necessary condition? So, uh, so we now have to show that the absence of conjugate points is also a necessary condition for uh, the positive definiteness of the second variation. So, we will next, next we show, we show that absence, the, ab the absence of conjugate points, the absence of conjugate points is also a necessary condition, a necessary condition for positive definiteness, right. So, the absence of conjugate points is is going to serve as a necessary conditions as well. So, I am going to write away uh, write away describe this result in the form of a theorem, uh, but before that in the form of in fact two theorems. So, the, the first theorem the first theorem gives us the link between the positive definiteness of the second variation and the absence of uh, the conjugate points. So, I, I denote this theorem as theorem 26. So, this is going to provide us with the link between between the positive definiteness definiteness of the second variation uh, and and the absence and the absence well the absence the absence of conjugate points ok. So, the result is as follows. So, suppose j is uh, suppose my integrand f is a smooth function. So, let 
f be a smooth function right of its arguments and let y be an extremal be a smooth extremal. So, we always assume that uh, y satisfies the Euler Lagrange equations for the functional j for the functional j which is for the functional j which is uh, integral of f d x from x naught to x 1 such that the strengthened Legendre condition holds for all x in x naught to x 1. Then I have the following two results. The first result says that the second variation the second variation is positive for all eta non zero right so then there is if if this holds the second variation is positive definite then there are no points conjugate to the point x naught in the entire interval entire closed interval x naught to x1 so this means this means so then so then there are no points points conjugate uh, conjugate uh, conjugate to x naught in the interval closed interval x naught to x 1 and the second result says that if the second variation uh, of eta comma y is non negative for non zero epsilon then again the same statement holds uh, to the point x naught in now in the open interval from from x naught to x 1 right well the first one is half open interval ok so what is this result this result gives us the necessary condition or the link between the positive definiteness of the second variation to the non existence of the conjugate points right but now we need another result which links or provides us the necessary condition as well as the link between y being the minimum the extremal being the minimum to the second variation being positive definiteness definite and that will complete the uh, complete the cycle. So, the result that we have is uh, now the result that I am going to write again in the form of a theorem will be the combination of this particular theorem that is theorem 26 and a previous theorem that we had described in my last lecture namely the link between uh, the positive definiteness of the second variation and y being the local minima that was theorem 23 ok. So, so theorem 23 this was done in our previous lecture lecture uh, lecture 16 and this theorem above theorem 26 gives us the following result. It tells us that suppose it gives us the following result which is now the necessary condition we are after or also a, a more refined necessary condition known as the Jacobi necessary condition right. So, this is a, mo a more refined necessary condition. Uh, by by Jacobi refined necessary condition by Jacobi it tells us that theorem I denoted by next theorem theorem 27 let let y be a smooth extremal let y be a smooth extremal let y be a smooth extremal for the functional j of y given by integral from x 0 to x 1 f of x y y prime d x such that for all x in x 0 to x 1 f of y prime y prime is positive. So, we are assuming the conditions of smoothness as well as uh, the legendary strengthened legendary condition for the extremal y right. Uh, so, this is greater than 0 along 
along our extremal y and if y produces no produces a local minima for j then there are no conjugate points in the open interval x0 to x1 if y produces produces a local minima minima for our functional j then then this implies there exists no uh, no points conjugate conjugate to x0 in the open interval x0 to x1 right so the necessary condition for a minimum is the non existence of conjugate points also known as the jacobi the necessary conditions by jacobi so the non existence of conjugate points is a necessary and sufficient condition for positive certainly positive definiteness of the second variation but how about is it a necessary condi uh, is it well we have certainly shown that the non existence is a sufficient con sorry necessary condition for uh, the existence of minima but how about the non existence of conjugate points being a sufficient condition for minima uh, to to finally state that result we have to define uh, what norm we are talking about so what is our function norm right so so what i have is let us first quickly describe the norm in which we are working uh, or the norm with which we are describing the the distance between two functions right so we are now going to look at uh, to look at to look at so so right now in earlier the, this is the necessary condition the necessary condition right so this is a necessary condition so to look at at sufficient condition we now look at the norm of the function space we have to define the norm right so the so the sufficiency is not clear right now so it's not clear because we haven't described the function norm right so let us define uh, define the function norm let me define the one norm on our space so on the space which is c2 of x0 x1 so c2 of x0 x1 is the second order continuously differentiable functions by the following i define my one norm of y to be the supremum of mod of y uh, for all x from x0 to x1 plus the supremum of mod of y prime for all x from x0 to x1 right so this is how i define my one norm and with this one norm i can describe uh, the definition of the so called weak minima as well as later on a strong minima so i am going to talk about the concept of weak minima so suppose j from this function space to r has a so this functional has a weak minima it has a weak minima or weak local minima has a weak local minima at y in the set s y is an extremal so without saying much we are always assuming that we are working with extremal solutions so suppose y is an extremal if there exists a positive number delta right delta uh, which is positive such that the difference of uh, the perturbation of the functional or the perturbation of the functional or the difference of the functional is greater than equal to 0 for all perturbed uh, extremals in s such that such that the difference in the extremal and its perturbation is bounded above is bounded above by delta right so if that is true then i i say that j has a weak local minima right so similarly similarly i can say that j has j has a weak 
local maxima right if and only if minus j has has weak local minima so i don't bother about local maxima at all because the minus of the local minimum the results with a minus sign will give me the results for the local maximum okay and then further let me also describe let me also describe so this is let me call this as one so i also describe another norm the c zero the zero norm as follows so i define my zero norm on c2 of x0 x1 by by uh, the zero norm of y is the supremum of y uh, for all x in x0 to x1 so this is the supremum right okay so certainly if uh, if the function is bounded above by the one norm it will be certainly bounded above by the zero norm right so so with the zero norm i can define another concept of the so called strong maxima or strong minima right so so this is my definition of weak minima so i can define uh, i can define my concept of strong uh, strong minima or even strong maxima uh, similar similar to the weak minima or the weak maxima case case with my one norm replaced by zero norm right so in the same definition as in the previous slide if we replace our one norm with the zero norm i am going to get the result for uh, the existence of a weak sorry strong uh, local minima or local maxima right okay so certainly certainly if within the definition if the function satisfies the weak weakness condition then it will certainly satisfy the strong condition so in our definition in our previous two definitions right certainly if i have that if the perturbation of y uh, y satisfies uh, satisfies the weakness criteria then it must satisfy uh, the strong criteria right strong criteria or in other words well this is a strict inequality right so this is what we have uh, this is a strict inequality here so strict inequality okay so the implication is certainly if a if an extremal is weak minima then it is bound to be a strong minima and the same result holds for maxima so weak minima weak minima implies uh, strong implies strong minima but the vice versa does not hold right it is clear to see why okay so so we are ready to give our our uh, our important result of the sufficiency of uh, the local minima and the result is as follows so i am going to state once we have described these norms i am going to state the result theorem 28 namely the sufficiency conditions the sufficiency condition which is the link the link between no conjugate points the link between no conjugate points and and weak minima and that will complete our picture uh, of if and only if criteria for non existence of uh, conjugate points linking to the existence of y being a uh, the extremal being a local minimum right so the the result is as follows let let my y in the set s be an extremal be an extremal right for our for our functional 
for our functional uh, j which is given by integral of f dx which is a fixed point uh, functional and suppose and suppose uh, that this extremal satisfies the strength and legendary condition. So, suppose uh, that along this extremal uh, the strengthened the strengthened legendary condition holds along this extremal the strengthened legendary condition holds or I have that y prime y prime at f of x comma y comma y prime is greater than 0 uh, is satisfied is satisfied for all x from x naught to x 1 right. Then the sufficiency condition says that suppose further if there are no conjugate points then we are bound to get a weak local minima. So, suppose suppose further there are no points conjugate there are no points conjugate suppose there are no points conjugate to x naught in in x naught x 1 then j has a weak weak local minimum j has a weak local minimum uh, at at my extremal y ok so so that is the result which completes our discussion or the link between the non existence of conjugate point and the existence of local minimum